In the wake of 9-11, the British government decided to reassess and update its national security strategy to reflect the increased threat of international terrorism. A new chapter was added to the Strategic Defense Review in 2002, setting out the contribution of the armed forces to counterterrorism. In 2006, the Cross-Government Counterterrorism Strategy contest and Cross-Government Counterproliferation Framework were implemented. The Office of Security and Counterterrorism, OSCT, was established within the Home Office in 2007 to provide policy oversight of contest across government ministries. A new strategic framework for the Foreign and Commonwealth Office was formed in 2008, emphasizing the fact that national security also significantly depends on work with other nations. Throughout this review process, the British government regarded its counterterrorism strategy as a national policy, which incorporates economic, educational, and social policy, and foreign affairs, as well as purely defense, security, and intelligence matters. The policy realistically acknowledges that there will be more attacks and that 100% security cannot be guaranteed. Significantly, it also stresses the importance of hearts and minds. The National Security Strategy of the UK, published in March 2008, provides guiding principles that define the UK's counterterrorism strategy. Strategy is clearly grounded in a set of core values which includes, quote, human rights, the rule of law, legitimate and accountable government, justice, freedom, tolerance, and opportunity for all, close quote. To reiterate the UK's objectives and certainty of risk, quote, at home our aim should be that people are able to go about their business without fear and with a reasonable assurance of safety. Some risk is inevitable, and the government's role is to minimize and mitigate it, close quote. Whenever possible, Her Majesty's government will tackle security challenges early. Quote, the most effective way to reduce the long-term threat from terrorism is to tackle the causes of violent extremism both at home and overseas. Close quote. Overseas, the government favors a multilateral approach. Quote, the threats and drivers are increasingly transnational and demand a transnational response. Therefore, UK supports action by the UN, EU, NATO, IMF, and World Bank to address international terrorism. However, partnership with the USA is UK's most important bilateral relationship and central to our national security. Close quote. At home, Her Majesty's government also favors a partnership approach. Rather than strictly military, police, intelligence, and security agencies, quote, the changing nature of the threats and risks and our improved understanding of the best way to respond to them demand broader partnerships with owners and operators to protect critical sites and essential services, with business to improve resilience, with local authorities and communities to plan for emergencies and to counter violent extremism, and with individuals where changing people's behavior is the best way to mitigate risk." Close quote. Within government, a more integrated approach must be developed. Quote, the major security challenges require an integrated response that cuts across departmental lines and traditional policy areas. Close quote. The UK government will retain strong, balanced, and flexible capabilities. Quote, Her Majesty's government continues to invest in a wide range of capabilities for dealing with the immediate threat from intelligence to policing to greater resilience. Close quote. Her Majesty's Government will also continue to invest, learn, and improve to strengthen its security. Quote, we recognize that we need to continue to invest and improve, to monitor the effects of our policy and actions, and to learn from our experience. Close quote. The four P's constitute the core of British counterterrorism strategy. 1. Prevent. Counter-radicalization as the cause of violent extremism. 2. Protect. Defend critical national infrastructure and the UK's borders. 3. Prepare. Develop a response to any terrorist attack in the UK. 4. Pursue. Detect, disrupt, and prosecute terrorists at home and abroad. Each of these strands will now be examined in greater detail. The first strand of the UK's counterterrorism strategy is prevent. Prevent begins with fighting for the hearts and minds of young teens in Muslim communities in the UK. Will they become law-abiding citizens or suicide bombers by the time they reach 18? 
Local community engagement is critical to reduce tensions. Regional and local government, local police, volunteer and community groups, faith groups, education, art, and media all play roles in PREVENT. Their interaction with local Muslim communities in the UK must be highly sensitive to their religious, economic, political, and social concerns. The government's domestic policy regarding economics, the criminal justice system, health, and education all significantly influence radicalization within the Muslim community. UK foreign policy, particularly regarding Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Syria, and the Middle East, is crucial to the prevention of homegrown extremism. In addition to the actual policies themselves, press coverage of UK military operations overseas and the impact of those operations on the domestic Muslim community are important matters requiring careful consideration. A successful prevent policy is critical to the long-term reduction of extreme radicalization, which fuels terrorism in the UK. However, this endeavor will be neither quick nor easy. The prevent message must be consistent and comprehensible. Consequently, several communication principles must be considered. 1. Communicate with people, not just their faith. Islam cannot be blamed for terrorism. Rather, the Muslim community must support moderate leadership and isolate extremism. 2. Support common positions, such as family, prosperity, opportunity, and freedom of worship. Denounce the use of violence. 3. Fill information gaps to counter myths and misperceptions that UK domestic and foreign policy is Islamophobic. Media must be fully employed to positively portray the UK and undermine the Al-Qaeda and ISIS narrative. 4. Utilize the Research Information and Communications Unit, RICU, within OSCT to coordinate the PREVENT message across different government ministries. PREVENT has been a controversial policy with its critics claiming that the police have used it as a means of covertly collecting intelligence on the UK Muslim community. A further radicalization problem occurred in 2014 when it became clear that a small number of teachers and school governors in some majority Muslim schools in Birmingham were either promoting extreme Muslim religious views to their students or turning a blind eye when that was happening. This came to light after a comprehensive report conducted by Peter Clark, a retired senior police officer with considerable CT experience. To conduct the review, Clark was appointed an Education Commissioner by the Department of Education. His full report can be found on the gov.uk website. Its publication led to the firing of some teachers from schools in Birmingham and the removal of a number of school governors from their supervisory positions. The possibility of other efforts to radicalize students across the UK school system have now been further reduced by the wider implementation of the recommendations of the Clark Report across the UK education system. As a result of the evolving threat of radicalization and from ever-increasing experience in prevents implementation, UK's counter-radicalization program has been reviewed and the role of numerous other government departments, Treasury, Health, Education, etc., has been subsequently increased. The latest update of PREVENT was published by the Home Office in June 2011. An increasingly significant aspect of PREVENT has been the development of UK's approach to individual de-radicalization. This is named the Channel Program. Channel provides schools, colleges, universities, health professionals, and local authorities with a reporting option if they observe a student, patient, or employee who may be on the path of radicalization. Channel does not involve a subsequent investigation by intelligence or police agencies. Instead, Channel is staffed by social service professionals, psychologists, and moderate religious scholars who can stage an intervention with the individual who has been assessed as being at risk. Hopefully their interaction with the individual can answer the religious, social, and cultural queries that may have been propelling the individual toward terrorism. After a slow start, Channel is now a fully-fledged element of PREVENT. For instance, in 2015, Channel received 1,809 referrals. Of this number, after subsequent review, Approximately half required interventions with the individuals of concern. 
To date, none of these individuals appear to have continued to be radicalized, and none have been subsequently arrested for terrorism. Of course, it is inevitable that eventually a few will be. But regardless of the program's failure in their individual cases, the overall success of Channel has reduced the development of terrorism in UK and undoubtedly saved lives. The second strand of the UK's counterterrorism strategy is protect. In comparison to prevent, protect is slightly easier to implement for several reasons. To begin with, Her Majesty's government has considerable experience protecting key points following the Irish Troubles. In addition, the UK's national infrastructure, which delivers essential services to the British population, covers nine distinct sectors food, communications, transport, energy, water, health, government, emergency services, and finance. Finally, there are 565 critical key points in the UK, whose security is coordinated by the Centre for the Protection of National Infrastructure, CPNI. CPNI serves an important function in PROTECT. It is located in the British Security Service, MI5, and is staffed by security service officers and sector experts. CPNI can therefore respond rapidly to new threats revealed by intelligence, such as a liquid explosive threat against aircraft, which emerged in 2006. UK PROTECT policy is not driven by threat. CPNI determined threat to be too broad and inaccurate, and every installation in every sector considered itself a key point. Instead, CPNI developed an impact-driven, vulnerability-focused, and threat-informed approach, which rates each key point on a criticality scale in the event of its loss. This scale rates the impact of each key point on a scale of 5 down to 0. Sector significance and impact on the UK population are key considerations in determining the rating of an event when applying this scale. Category 5 describes catastrophic events. Category 4 events are considered severe. Category 3 events are characterized as substantial. Category 2 events, significant. Category 1 events would be moderate, and Category 0 events would be considered minor with no impact on any sector. Examples are shown here to illustrate how the criticality scale might be applied. Once each key point is rated, CPNI provides security advice for its protection, which is then implemented by the sponsor government department. For example, aviation falls under the Department of Transport. During the years of Irish terrorism, the UK's infrastructure was frequently attacked. In response, a series of pragmatic principles emerged. Identify the critical facility that must be protected in each key point. For example, an attack on a single oil pipeline at an oil refinery is not critical, but the loss of the control room running the whole refinery might be. Defend in depth and identify external vulnerabilities. Security defenses, such as CCTV cameras, fences, and locks, only buy time for a reaction force to respond. Are there contingency plans in place for that reaction, and are they regularly rehearsed? For example, is there an emergency generator plan? Staff is the greatest vulnerability at a key point. Who needs to be vetted, and what are the access controls? Protect is generally the most visible aspect of a nation's counterterrorism policy, as security measures are placed around key points. Often the key to a successful Protect policy is the secure exchange of intelligence and security information throughout the commercial world. Protect also brings other issues into play. CPNI shares threat intelligence via sector information exchanges. These are CPNI-sponsored meetings of security representatives from the leading commercial companies in that particular sector. They are briefed on the latest threat intelligence based on the traffic light system, in which the colors red, yellow, and green correspond to different levels of intelligence sensitivity as follows. Red, for their information only, cannot be shared with colleagues. Yellow, need to know but can be passed to other colleagues as necessary, and 
green, can be widely disseminated among company employees. An additional facet of Protect is the widespread use of closed-circuit television, CCTV. Approximately 25% of the world's CCTV cameras are in the UK. However, their use is not considered a major civil liberties violation by the general public. In support of counterterrorism investigations, the Protect network run by CPNI can be a significant source of intelligence for MI5. The police-run National Counterterrorism Security Office is co-located with CPNI. This office runs the Counterterrorism Security Advisors, CTSA, network in every police force across the UK. The CTSAs identify and assess local critical sites, develop security plans for those sites, and promote protect awareness within their force. They also receive comprehensive training in IED preparation, CBRN threats, vulnerable site surveys, and integrated security systems. After the London bombings on July 7, 2005, CTSAs were additionally tasked with reviewing security at local crowded places. Through the CTSAs, the National Counter-Terrorism Security Office, NACSO, sponsors a series of tabletop exercises which brief commercial businesses on how to protect themselves against the threat of terrorism. These exercises include Project Argus, which specifically considers the security of a shopping mall. Another NACSO initiative is Project Griffin, an IT-based threat dissemination network which circulates unclassified security information to the business community. As a result of CPNI and NACSEP's efforts, protective security is now widely practiced throughout the British business community. The security blanket established around the London Olympics of 2012 was the most complex in UK's history. It took over three years to plan and involved every aspect of PROTECT. The event took place at over 30 sites around the UK, as well as in the sporting venues of London. Apart from the ordinary crowds, the Olympics were attended by numerous national and international VIPs. A week after the Games' completion, the event was followed by the Paralympics, which also had to be secured. In addition, every British police force was deployed because, before the Games were officially opened, the Olympic torch was carried to every corner of the UK. The numerous security plans nationwide to secure sites, participants, spectators, traffic, accommodation, VIPs, and the general public involved the intelligence services, the police, the military, private security contractors, event organizers, and volunteers. Despite the threat of terrorism, the British public supported the Games in their thousands, and its peaceful conclusion marks a major achievement for UK's security agencies. In response to the ever-increasing cyber threat from hostile countries, terrorists, and malicious hackers, UK published a new National Cyber Security Strategy in November 2016. This established a new organization, the National Cyber Security Center, NCSC, which was formally opened in London in February 2017. The NCSC is a division within UK's Interception Intelligence Agency, General Communications Headquarters, GCHQ. However, it is staffed by officers and IT experts from across the British intelligence community. NCSC's role is to provide detailed cybersecurity guidance to UK government departments and UK's commercial community. This consists of online advice about all aspects of cyber attack and defense, as well as the publication of weekly threat updates. In future, NCSC will trial and evaluate new cybersecurity techniques before their wider introduction in the UK. NCSC will also provide a training academy for cybersecurity staff from UK's business world. The need for a national agency focused on cyber defense was highlighted by the announcement at NCSC's launch that UK had been subject to 188 serious cyber attacks during the previous three months. The third strand of the UK's counterterrorism strategy is PREPARE. PREPARE also emerged in response to the PIRA in the 1970s. In light of the Islamic extremist threat of terrorism, it has been updated and is now designed to improve resilience at the national, regional, and local levels to ensure that the UK is prepared for a terrorist attack. 
mitigate the consequences of an attack and facilitate a quick return to life as usual, and respond to attacks on British citizens and interests abroad. The development of PREPARE as a national counterterrorism strategy prompted a fundamental reorganization within the British government's counterterrorism and law enforcement agencies. The Joint Terrorism Analysis Center, JTAC, was established in 2003. JTAC, JTAC, brings together expertise from the police, intelligence agencies, and 16 government departments to review, assess intelligence, and disseminate appropriate reports to the rest of Whitehall. JTAC also runs the Counterterrorism Alert System, which informs Her Majesty's government and the public when a terrorism threat level changes. For instance, the threat from PIRA has decreased since 2003, while the threat to the UK from Al-Qaeda has remained severe, indicating a likely attack. The Serious Organized Crime Agency, SOCA, was formed in 2006. SOCA is an amalgamation of the National Criminal Intelligence Service, Her Majesty's Customs and Excise Enforcement Branch, and the Police Regional Crime Squads. Its mission is to counter national law enforcement threats, primarily drug and people smuggling. The UK Border Agency was established in 2008, combining the UK's existing border agencies, namely Her Majesty's Customs, the Immigration Service, and Police Ports Units. Together with the introduction of the new Border Control IT system, eBorders, and the possible development of a national identity scheme requiring ID cards for all residents over the age of 16, the UK Border Agency will significantly enhance UK border security against both criminals and terrorists. In 2013, SOCA's responsibilities were broadened to include investigations into pedophilia. The organization was then renamed and became the National Crime Agency, NCA. In the absence of a National Police Department in UK, the NCA has the important role of coordinating law enforcement operations against serious criminals across police boundaries. There is a close relationship between the NCA and the British Security Service, MI5. It is common to share intelligence and to pass casework between the two agencies. The division of labor is straightforward. MI5 leads in any case involving terrorism, while NCA takes responsibility for all criminal cases. There's enough work to keep both agencies busy so turf wars do not occur. Additionally, the National Crisis Command structure has been further developed in light of the Al-Qaeda and ISIS threats. The Home Secretary now chairs a weekly meeting which includes the Office of Security and Counterterrorism, OSCT, JTAC, and the UK Intelligence Community, UKIC, and Senior Counterterrorism Police to review the current domestic terrorism situation and to initiate prevent measures as required. The well-established Cabinet Office Briefing Room, COBR, continues to be the Operational Oversight Committee during a national security crisis. COBR is normally chaired by the Home Secretary, although the Prime Minister may step in if the situation is sufficiently serious, and attended by other government ministers and senior officers from the UK intelligence community and counterterrorism police. Counterterrorism funding has also increased dramatically. Resources dedicated to counterterrorism and intelligence has increased from £1 billion in 2001 to £22.5 billion in 2015. The UK also established a national doctrine for interagency counterterrorism response. One aspect is the development of the UK's operational doctrine during a covert counterterrorism investigation. The doctrine is contained in the Manual of Major Covert Terrorist Investigations and explains the interagency command structure called the Executive Liaison Group, ELG, which actually runs a covert counterterrorism investigation. The ELG evolved in the 1990s in response to the PIRA attacks and will be further explained in Module 3. A second aspect is the development of national counterterrorism training. MI5 provides counterterrorism briefings on threat, and the UK's operational doctrine for police chief constables, assistant chief constables, officers in the police senior leadership development program and police senior officers 
on the Strategic Command course. There are formal MI5 counterterrorism courses for senior line managers, as well as all heads of police special branches, SB, and counterterrorism units, all junior SB staff, all junior police officers who may man a counterterrorism operations room or intelligence cell, and those officers who may attend an ELG. MI5 provides police with specialist training in source handling and technical operations for counterterrorism operations. MI5 also provides police with two tabletop exercises, which discuss the covert, pre-arrest, and overt, post-attack scenarios. Additionally, MI5 offers a range of protective security, personnel security, and physical security courses for policemen in response to the threat from counterterrorism and espionage. The third aspect of the National Doctrine for Interagency Counterterrorism Response is the development of major incident procedure manuals. These have been prepared in each major UK city and establish the respective roles and responsibilities of the various emergency services, local authorities, and the military in the event of a terrorist attack. The Manual for London was prepared by the London Emergency Services Liaison Panel and in 2015 was in its ninth edition. The UK recognizes the serious threat posed by weapons of mass destruction. However, it considers WMD preparedness to be just one facet of the national counterterrorism strategy as a whole. Separate CBRN divisions have not been established within MI5 or the police. Instead, civilian and military experts would be called upon if a WMD situation were to occur. The UK's approach to the WMD threat is 1. Dissuade diplomatically persuade countries not to acquire, develop, or contribute to the spread of WMD and related materials and expertise, which could eventually get into the hands of terrorists. 2. Detect. Expose attempts by states and terrorists to develop or acquire WMD capability. 3. Deny. Refuse terrorists or unfriendly states access to WMDs and the necessary materials, equipment, technology, and expertise to develop them. 4. Defend. Facilitate the development of appropriate operational responses to CBRN incidents. This ranges from the installation of detection devices at ports to the deployment of specialist military units to support police in the wake of an attack. The final strand of the UK's national counterterrorism strategy, Pursue, will be considered in the third module.